Hello everybody, this is Squash Peace here on the uh, Loopville TCG and here I'm taking you through my top 8 Magnolia deck profile that I piloted at BSF Sydney. Um, really fun event, I had a, lo had a lot of fun. Um, went personal record of 3-3 uh, because uh, bad luck is, it's just, it's just how it is in D, you know. Getting over triggered, you know, it's pretty good but other than that, I just figured I'd talk about Magnolia for a little bit for those of you that may not know about it and give you a little bit of insight into what the deck's like and uh, what it's going to be like, hopefully come Friday. Yeah, full warning, this is done before ban list is revealed, so hopefully, hopefully, we get the same sort of thing as Japan with a bit more. All right, so let's talk about the ride deck first. Now we begin with our starter. The best starter in the game, I will not hear a word to the contrary, Dream Nibbling, he's great. They've I want more SPs, by the way. Hit me up if you have any. Ranker Chain. Uh, Ranker Chain is our grade one of choice. He allows you to Solblast one to draw two cards. Then you can either discard two cards or one order from your hand. Uh, very good grade one. I'd almost argue he's the best ride deck grade one in the entire game. But um, yeah, free advantage at the cost of a Soul Blast. Very good. Black Tears Husk Dragon, this guy when he's rowed, you get to put a normal order from your drop zone back to your hand. Um, really good for the simple reason that he's, you can Soul Blast him out and then you can call him back with one of your many ways to revive things. If you play an order, he's then, you know, slightly bigger, lets you hit numbers. And finally, of course, Magnolia. So Magnolia, very good. End of battle that it attacks, you can Counter Blast one, to give a back row rearguard the ability to attack, or give a rearguard, sorry, the ability to attack from the back row, and plus 5k power. And if you happen to Persona Ride, which I don't run in this deck, you get to choose 3 instead of 1. So, Magnolia here, you know, it lets your turn 3, like your first grade 3 turn, be 4 attacks, which is pretty strong for the cost of a counter blast, and, you know, very strong. Also, you know, DSR, gotta flex it because Mega Me is really cool. All right, let's talk about the main deck. We begin with half the reason this deck is good. Four Magnolia Elder. Woo, SSR, heck yeah. All right, so when Magnolia Elder is placed on the Vanguard Circle, you can call, you can choose a card from your soul, I should say, and you may call it to rear. You don't have to call if you don't want to. That's the best part about this. And also, the real reason why it's good, if you have one or more cards in your soul or on your rearguard circle with Magnolia in their card names, hint, um, all of your rearguards can attack and intercept from the back row and get power plus 5,000. This includes during your opponent's turn, so do keep that in mind if they try to swing into them. Um, so yeah, the ability to call stuff from soul just for riding is really good, it means you just get free field. Um, against... Decks that don't retire a lot, so things that aren't like Gravidia or Eugene or the like, don't be afraid to call this from Sol. Like, if they can't touch your field, this is just like the freest attacker you can get. It's especially good if you don't have, say, other like high power things like Inlet Pulse. If you haven't drawn them, then you can just call Magnolia and it's a free 18k attacker. Or you can just like call another one of these from your hand and, you know, just get it for free. But yeah, Magnolia Elder. Very much half the reason the deck is good. The other half of the reason why the deck is good, and the elephant in the room, Mr. Inlet Pulse Dragon. So, Inlet Pulse, I should explain why he's good. First skill, doesn't matter, you're not on Flagberg. The second skill is where it's at. The end of the turn, if you've attacked four or more times in that turn, you put him into the soul and draw one card. So this gives you a really really consistent draw engine in the mid to late game when you're trying to just kill your opponent because Magnolia is a control deck I really do believe like despite the fact that it can do six attacks it feels like a control deck just because you know you're pressuring your opponent with high power rear guards and then just drawing a million cards for it there's no reason not to call it so for those of you who may not know recently in Japanese Inlet Pulse here was choice restricted with Magnolia Elder. So you can either run Magnolia Elder or Inlet Pulse, not both. Um, considering that the ban list comes out on Friday at the time of recording, um, I expect the same hit to happen in English, considering just how good Magnolia is as a deck. So replacing Inlet Pulse, it's going to be hard because Inlet Pulse is really, really good. And Magnolia losing its draw engine will stop it from being 
like, arguably the best deck in the format. It's still good, because, again, six attacks for no cost, realistically, that's really good. But in terms of things you can replace this guy with, um, there are a couple of things. There's the one from Festival Collection, Armadi, Armadi I believe it's called. It's when your unit attacks from the back row, you can counterblast one and put it to the soul to give that attacking unit plus 10,000 power. You know, really good with Gionosla, really good sort of way to give other things power in case you need it to. Uh, yeah, and it's a way to generate soul, albeit for a counterblast, but then again, what can you do? Uh, there's also things like, you know, Gabreg, the guy that guard restricts, you know. Um, but, you know, other than that, it's really hard to replace this. But it's going to have to be done, I believe. If not, well, Magnolia is still the best deck. There you go. Um, next, let's talk about our grade twos. First things first is a card that I have always been iffy on, Pantero. So half the time I think this guy is the nuts, and other times I think he is pretty crap. So he's a 9k, but when placed on rear from anywhere, you can Soul Blast 1 to call a copy of him from the drop, which then allows you to Soul Blast another one to call another copy from the drop and so on and so forth. And when it attacks, if your Vanguard has Magnolia in the name, so the Grade 3 or Elder, you can give him plus 5k until the end of the turn. Oh, battle, sorry. Um, so 14k attacker, um, 19k attacker on the Grade 4 turn, 14k attacker on the Grade 3 turn. Um, yeah, that sounds pretty, and can call itself back. That sounds really strong at first glance, but there's one big problem I have with him. 9k base means you can't rush with it in the early game. And I don't know about you, but I really like being able to rush. But the way I've built the deck i.e. with the Zorga Ride line, you kind of need to run this. It's just freest discard in the entire deck. Um, but yeah, the way that it is, you still do want to run it for the most part because I really had nothing better to run. If I could run Armadi, I would be running two Armadi and two Gabreg over the four Pantera, just for the rush. Um, next, old favourite, Sylvanhorn Beast, Gunosla. Gunosla? Is that how it's pronounced? Anyway, when it attacks from a back row rearguard circle, you can last one and give one of your other rear guards this unit's power until end turn. So, at minimum, on attack, counterblast one, give another rear guard plus 15,000. Very good. Um, and again, it's a 10k, so you can rush with it early game. Uh, you can also, you know, if you have multiples of these, you can just play volleyball, you know, swing 15, give 15 here, swing 30, give 30 to another rear. Very good. Um, I still maintain that this is one of the best grade twos in the deck. But it's not the best grade 2 in the deck. No, that honor goes to our old friend, you know it, you love it, Npix. Why does every deck I play need a promo? Anyway, Npix, 8k base. Looks really, really bad at first glance, but it has a continuous a back row rearguard circle. It gets plus 10,000 power, so it's an 18k. And if you have three or less rearguards, all of your rearguards in the same column as this unit cannot be chosen by your opponent's card effects. Includes itself, so... In, this is the reason why you don't just outright lose to Gravidia or Eugene or Seraph or other such controller. Because you can go, cool, what are you going to do to my field? Oh, you have Mass Retire? Oh, I got him. <laughs> like, you have Mass Board Wipe like Mara Magnus? Okay, cool. That's just one deck. But you know, other decks that have targeted removal can't really deal with this, which is a great thing. Uh, and 23k attacker on both grade 3 and grade 4 turn, really good. Gets through defensives. I like that a lot in my decks. Um, next, yeah, obligatory for null guards. Stopping attacks is really good, especially when they have multiple critical, and, you know, there's only so much your hand can do in those situations. So, triggers. Over trigger, it wins games, you'll lose to it. It's just how it is. It's like, hey, over trigger, actually, I should probably point out. Uh, really good, because it's all triggers at once. That's really good, especially with Gunosla, where you can give it 100 million, and then pass 100 million to another Gunosla, and then pass 100 million to whatever else. Uh, now I should probably explain my trigger line. Six front, and five draw. Sorry about the glare, but um, I run fronts because normally I'm just going to aim to have a bunch of Ant Pixels in the back row. So in those scenarios, you really want your front row to have power, whether it's Pantero, whether it's Inlet, whether it's other Magnolias, they're only going to be eight, they're going to be 18 or 19k base, which if your opponent hits a defensive, 
That's really, really bad. Uh, yeah, I know they can't target back row, so it's less good with Gyonosla, but as it stands, you re I really just want my power to be in the front row. And then draws, because you're a peace-reliant deck. You need to see Elder, you need to see Inlet, you need to see your Impixes and control matchups. Um, yeah. So you really want to draw into them, and we might as well run the effect draws and the effect fronts, because extra shield is very nice. So that's it for those, and then... I actually do have an excuse to explain these. Uh, four regular old heals. Now featuring two SP Elegy Pixie. So, the reasoning for regular heals is because the only decks... Because at the time of Springfest, the only effect heal that was legal was um, the if your opponent's unit has attacked two or more times. And I had to think about it. The only decks that really multi-attack are Magnolia, which only attacks with one unit at a time, Kyrie, which bounces its units, then recalls it, so it's a new instance, Bruce, which is the only de thing that's relevant against, um, and other than that, not really anything else. As weird as that sounds, but... Yeah, so I figured just regular old heals was fine. The one matchup I had, which was against Chaos, um, they didn't see the restander, so the effect heal would not have mattered. So I was I felt right in my decision at running four regular heals. And now for the orders, because of course we're running the Zorga Ride line, we kind of need some orders. Four spiritual body condensation, and two regurgitation from the underworld. Condensation is the best order in Magnolia. I will not really agree to anything else, because, well, revive a thing from drop with grade equal to or less than your vanguard and give it 5k. Just revive an inlet pulse, and it's a 23k. That's nuts. Because um, you can soul blast down an inlet and then call that same inlet. It's really good. Now, what people might be surprised by is the two regurgitation. I know people at Springfest were. Um, so for a counter blast and a soul blast, you can retire any player's rear guard, your own or your opponent's, and then call a card with the same grade as the retired card from your drop. So they give you a grade 2, cool. I can kill it and then bring back a Gunosla or an Npix or a whatever. They give you a grade 3, cool. I can just bring back Magnolia or Inlet Pulse. Um, removal is really good, especially against decks that don't expect it. And that's all I can really say. So, uh, I suppose I should talk about matchups. Um, I was against, round 1 I was against Kyrie. They didn't see the grade 4. Even scrying for it, dry checking it, none of that. Round two, I was against Chaos, which I won because my opponent went all in, but only got to 12 cards in soul. But unfortunately, the team lost that one, but that's all right. Round three, I was against Nirvana, draw crit over, kind of unfortunate. Um, round four, I was against Bastion, crit over on grade three turn, again, pretty unfortunate. Round five, I was against Gravidia, I got three end picks set up in the back row. Because, you know, Empix is really good. And round six, I was against, um... What was I against round six? Um, Baromagnus. Yes, Baromagnus. I did a lot of testing against Baromagnus, and I came to the conclusion it's a bit of a lost cause, because Barrow is really, really good at, like, countering Magnolia. Suck up all my rear guards. What can I do? And, yeah, that's exactly what happened. They went first, got to 15 in Seoul, got them GG's. Um, but, you know, X1, we still made top 8, and I got dumpstered by a Kyrie who went first and saw the grade 4. Multiple of the grade 4, in fact. But, you know, what can you do? I'm still immensely happy that we made top 8. Um, and, yeah, that's, I'm glad that I was able to do it with a deck that I actually like playing. Like, yeah, Magnolia's meta, but I've liked playing Magnolia ever since set 1, really. It's weird. Like, I have a love-hate relationship with this deck. But, you know, that is the way it is. Um, yeah. So, that's it for that. Please, you know, give a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't, well then, that's your opinion, and you're entitled to it. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and, um, yeah. Peace out.